Here I'm logged into my Flexi as administrator and you can see my summary page. To set up all of the data, we move to the tags menu on the left hand side. And if you remember, the first thing we need to set up is our IO servers. So here's a list of the available IO servers on the Flexi that I have in front of me. The MEM option here is greyed out. There's nothing that you can set in the options for this. And similarly, the E1 internal I.O. settings, there's no configuration parameters here by default. So the first one we can look at to set up is our Modbus I.O. server. Now, I have a, a PLC which is connected to my Flexi and uh, we'll be reading some Modbus registers from that in the, the long run. But uh, for now, what I can do is set up a topic to poll that Modbus server. So my poll rate can be set to something other than once every two seconds. Let's make that once a second. And as I said, if we want to have a shorthand, we can put the slave address and the IP address for our Modbus device in the menu here. So I've enabled a topic and given the IP address for my PLC. If I didn't want to address my PLC here, or if I had more than three different PLCs or other devices to communicate with, we can delay putting in this IP address until we create the tags. But for now, we've uh, set this up and so we can just update the system. And now it's ready to read data from a Modbus server. The top of the screen here, you'll see there's actually mention here of a Modbus server. This is the reverse. This is where the E1 Flexi itself can publish data to other Modbus TCP clients. It's enabled by default um, and any tags that we set up, we can then publish those on out and set up the Flexi to act as a Modbus gateway. So that's set there. Just to show you some of the other options, if we had an Alan Bradley PLC, you know, again, we have a very similar configuration here with device addresses and poll rates. Um, if we were talking to Siemens, then again, the, the ISO TCP protocol here set up and similarly down for, for other protocols and other PLC manufacturers. So that's all we need to set up in our IO servers. So the next thing we'd want to look at is the actual tags themselves and where to set those up. And we do that here from the values menu. So here we have a, a blank configuration. We have no tags configured. So before I, I start making tags, let me explain a couple of things to you on the left hand side. We have here two sets of options. We have a list of pages and we have a list of tag groups. The difference between these is that the pages are virtual groupings of tags, whereas the tag groups are actual groups of tags that can be used for um, selecting a group of tags for publishing or for displaying in a, a report or, or something of that type. So that's the difference between them. So having virtual pages allows us to, to create tags and group them together in a way that we can easily see them on the screen here when we're working with them. Um, and actually, I've already created a, a tag group here called IO card. So I added that one in previously. And what I'm going to do is to now set up some data tags to respond to inputs from an IO simulator card on the front of my Flexi. So in order to do that, we want to change our mode from view to setup. So now we're able to add new pages if we wanted to, but within this IO card, I can now from the center at the top here, start adding my tags. Okay, so we have a pop-up box here and it guides us through what we need to do. So our first tag, I'm going to call it something fairly innocuous like boiler temperature and uh, give it a description to say what it is actually referring to. So the water temperature in the boiler. Now this is coming from, as I said, the IO card. So this is going to use our E1 IO server. And the address of this is going to be my first analog input, which on the card is analog input number one. Now I could also include extended information here. And the extended information for, for this particular parameter is which slot on my Flexi the, uh, the value comes from. Remembering if you're working with a two or a four, four slot flexi, if you move cards around, then it might affect the order of the inputs that you're working with. So it's sometimes worth adding the slot number as a, an extra security. Now this is coming in as, a, as an integer value, um, but I want to convert it to a floating point. So I can select floating point 
and we can also specify a unit for this. Now I'm just going to quickly scroll to the bottom. All of the standard SI units are included in the configuration options of the Flexi now so that we can scroll up and find something sensible such as degrees Celsius. And my input being an integer, I want to apply a conversion to this. So I'm going to multiply this by a value of 0 0.0018 to convert it into a floating point number from the, the real value that's being read in from the, uh, the IO card. OK, right. So we've now set up our first tag and we can read a live value for that. But you'll see here we can also start to set up the other options here. So rather than returning here, let's set these up now. So we can start by enabling an alarm and we then get the options. Alarm setup, we have the ability to, to set up just a simple threshold alarm, either for a high level or a low level, or we can set four different values within our alarm setup. And this will then give us a situation where we will get a warning and then a, a, a high level alarm as a secondary follow on. So for my alarm here, I want to say, OK, if the water gets too low in temperature, I want to set a warning at 10 and an alarm at five, at five degrees. And similarly, if my water gets too high in temperature, I want to again get a warning and a, and a, a, a true alarm level after that. So we can set this up. Um, we can put a delay on our alarm and we can put a, a message in here to explain what's gone wrong when the alarm is triggered. So that message will be uh, sent out in any emails or SMS that are created by this alarm triggering. The other options here, we can set on our historical logging. So again, we know that our value is going to be polled from our, our device on a, a certain interval, and we can specify a, a suitable logging interval, which may or may not be the same as that. So we're going to poll it um, and store a value once a minute. Um, but I also don't want to, to store a value if the temperature is at only fluctuating by a small amount. So a logging dead band of one means it will only log if the whole value changes in my temperature. Again, we can set up real time logging here and take a, a snapshot view of our, our temperature changing at a very fast rate of change. And the final section in setting up a tag is, is the visibility sections. And again, this is where we can publish the value of this tag on out to other protocols. So here we can set up Modbus TCP and we can say we want this particular value to be written out. Um, we want it to go into register number four. It will be read out as a, an output register. And we want to use 32 bit format because we're creating a floating point number here. We can also publish for SNMP and, uh, and have the values read by an SNMP manager. And we have here the ability to say this is one of my key performance indicators. Let's turn that on. And at the bottom here, this is where we assign to those tag groups. So if I put this tag in group A, then at later stages, I can make a selection and say I want a report that just contains the values from group A. OK, so we can add our tag and you'll see it there in the, uh, the menu at the top. So let's add a, a second tag, which is quite similar. So this one I'm going to add, call it boiler pressure. I won't fill in all the, the fields. I think you see what they all are. Uh, this is my analog input two. And again, we're going to make it floating point, make the, the value more interesting. I'm going to multiply it by 0 0.001 to, to bring it down to a floating point number. Um, again, let's turn on some historical logging. So just log once a minute. Our real time logging again. Let's take a, a snapshot of a burst of logging there. And let's turn on our KPI and our group A to store this tag. So again, we've created some details there for a second floating point value that we're going to monitor. And a third one just for now. Let's add a, a Boolean. So we'll call this something like boiler switch and uh, and we can give it, uh, you know, again, boiler emergency shut off. And again, it's coming from E1. This is now going to be our first binary input. Um, remembering that the Flexi has two built in inputs. So inputs numbers one and two are built into the Flexi. So this is going to be number three. If I try to put number two, it gives me an error. That's already been 
taken digital input, not binary input, digital input three. Um, and it's going to be a Boolean value. Let's make it read only because obviously we don't want to be writing out a value out to a switch. Um, but we can set an alarm on this. And here, because it's a Boolean, we just specify that it's a Boolean alarm level. And, uh, and we've got the ability to then trigger on the setting on or off of that particular switch. OK, so that's the, the details on the tag there. Again, we can add it to group A and add our tag. OK, we have an error. Looking back up to the top, invalid characters in tag name. I've put a space in there. Spaces are not legal characters in, um, in these uh, tag names because obviously they're, they're going to be used for scripts, etc. And a switch and a space would be seen as, a, as an end of uh, a line in a, in a statement. OK, so we can now add that tag and we can see the, the value. OK, so we've created a few tags. Let's go back to our view and we can now see some values coming back from the uh, the input card and uh, I can affect those values very easily and we'll see them changing on the screen. Reason being we have auto refresh turned on at the bottom here so we've got this set as an update rate of once a second and uh, we can show that information updating automatically. The other information that uh, we can see very easily here are these settings here which gives us a reminder as to what um, what functions we have set for our different tags. So the alarm, whether we have set historical logging, whether we've set real time logging and whether we've got KPIs uh, enabled for these different alarm, these different tags in the system. So we can see that and uh, see the ability to do the uh, information there. Now you can see we've got a couple of indicators here that we've triggered an alarm. So if we double click on that, this takes us to our alarm summary. If you look on the left, we have an alarm menu item here and we're looking at the summary page here. So this shows me the alarms that have been triggered in my system and we have the ability here to acknowledge these alarms and, uh, and display the information there. And similarly, we can also view the history and this will show us when the alarm was triggered, whether it was triggered as, a, as just a simple Boolean level or if it was a, a, a high or a low level alarm that had been triggered. And we can set these back. And if we go back to our view menu, we can turn off that emergency shut off switch. We'll see the value clears there. The alarm's cleared here now. If we go back to our summary, that alarm has now been cleared from the view here as well. So that's how we show our current values live on the, uh, the overview screen of our system. But before we leave the subject of tag setup, I just wanted to show you one last thing, and that's the question we often get asked about uh, copying your tags from one Flexi to another. This is very easy to do by using the FTP server built into the Flexi. So I've created a set of tags on another Flexi, and just simply by using a, a simple FTP client, in this case I'm using my Windows Explorer, I can open the, the actual Flexi as my FTP server, and just copy into this a file which has been created or saved from another Flexi called var underscore lst.txt. This is the, the text file that configures and sets up all the tags within a Flexi. And importing a copy of this from another Flexi will add a new set of tags to my list. And thereby magic is a set I created earlier. OK, so this points out a couple of other things that we can just quickly investigate. Um, so here I have a, a set of tags which are actually meant to be coming in from my PLC. You see, I've helpfully named them PLC, but we have a problem here. Um, this column here is showing us the health, the status of the, the tags that I'm trying to read. And this is reporting a problem, a communications problem. So I can now investigate this. Um, and we could do that by having a look at the diagnostics and checking the event logs. And it will give me error messages in here to uh, indicate what the, the problem might be. Um, but actually, I know what my problem is because I created it. So if we go back to the values list communication problem, let's look at my IO server 
for Modbus and I've got the IP address wrong of my PLC. This is actually, actually at IP address 54. So if I now update that and go back to my values list, we can see all is healthy and I'm reading the values. So here we've, uh, we've got a, a set of new tags that uh, I've imported very simply from a, another Flex's configuration just by importing that file with FTP. Something else that we can do here very easily is, is to start monitoring some of these as, uh, as part of my um, system. So I can add these as, as KPIs by just double, by putting this into setup mode. And then by double clicking on a, a tag, I can then edit it and create it as a, as a KPI, or even more easily just by right clicking KPI management and selecting these as KPIs. So I can, uh, I can monitor these and uh, check a set of KPIs in this way, pulling in the, the details as I need to. OK, so that's uh, another shortcut for, for adding those KPIs to my system. And uh, from my, my list here, again, I can see the different parts of the system, the different pages and the, the parts which are allocated to the different pages to make my view easier. Similarly, I can filter. So if we were looking at all, I can filter and say, well, I just want to see the tags that they start with the name PLC and we can see the list there as well. OK, so I've now got a, a set of tags in my system, monitoring and uh, collecting data from the various inputs. So we'll move on to the, the next set of uh, information and have a look at the alarms in a little more detail.